Hello. Hello, hello. Hey, welcome. Does anyone know where you find the the link for this so I can share it? I'm really out of touch with the uh, how to stream, so Hello everyone, welcome. I don't see a share button, unfortunately. Um, oh well, I'll uh, I'll figure that out <laughs> next time. Um, but yeah, uh, I wanted to try streaming a little bit. Uh, some of you might have seen yesterday. <laughs> I was trying to be uh, discreet, and I thought I was test it with a private stream, and I accidentally went. Uh, live and a whole load of people uh, jumped in, which is really embarrassing. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I think I got it set up kind of working how I want. So I'm going to draw some demons for my next video and just wanted to hang out and, you know, chat with you guys. Yeah, I've, uh, I can show you, I've sketched just a couple of demons. Um, this guy, this one, which is kind of weird. I don't know how the, um, the lag is on this. Um, this weird head thing. Trying to make them pretty, like, uh, abstract, because uh, I said that... You know, their form should be kind of hard to comprehend, but all the ones I've drawn so far are actually fairly humanoid, so I'm trying to get a little bit weirder with them. Uh, did I go to art school? Where did you learn to draw? So, uh, I started when I was like 14, actually. There was a, back in the forum days of the internet there was a very cool forum called conceptart.org um and people posted drawing there every day um and i just thought it was so cool so i started doing that so i was drawing a lot for like my teenage years uh but i did go to an art school when i um reached like university age um i studied for I think like a year and a half uh at like a classical art school where you draw with like um charcoal from life every day which was super um technical like no real I, I guess some creative skill but very much about like how to uh use medium uh, like different mediums and how to learn to observe and stuff like that which was really helpful for me uh, I also had to unlearn a lot of that stuff eventually as well um but so yeah I, it's kind of unclear answer i guess i was self-taught for a long time and then i went to a school for a little bit let's see any advice for someone who wants to become an artist i think like um i really believe in having projects um I spent a long time just almost like trying to test if I learned anything um, without really like caring about what I was actually drawing. Um, I, I think like making like a couple of drawings or paintings based on something you like and having them be connected um, 
can really help with just learning to make stuff in general and then just sort of like you know everyone should try and learn like anatomy lighting all that kind of stuff but I think there's this idea that you need to learn all of that stuff before you're like allowed to make anything uh so yeah I really think just like having a project and be like oh I'm gonna do this theme for this group of pictures and I'm gonna try and focus on lighting or something like that and just trying to pick up the skills as you make the stuff you like rather than sort of waiting to be good enough to make things you enjoy that would be my advice for people wanting to get better at art let's see So I'm saying I can get the link with the share button. I think I'm just blind. I can't see the share button. Um, maybe someone can tell me very specifically where it is. Um, uh, is Studio Ghibli an inspiration for you? Because I uh, can see the resemblance in the art. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, I think the only one I maybe directly looked at for this project is like a uh, princess mononoke um but i i mean i think even if i'm not specifically looking at things they've made it's of course it seeps in because they're extremely influential um and i mean definitely like their backgrounds um that's something i always look at in their movies and really want to try and make something as good as those. I'm learning anatomy right now and I don't know if it's helping or not. Did it feel the same for you? Um, it takes a really long time to learn that kind of stuff. But like I said, I mean, I think... Um, like learn for what you need like maybe you want really want to make this drawing where a character is in a certain pose you know you don't need to be able to draw every pose ever from the top of your head but like you can kind of do a deep dive into okay if this character is crouched like this then i can um really try and figure out what's going on there with the body and like how can i just make this look as good as possible um, rather than trying to, you know, learn to be able to draw absolutely everything. Uh, you mentioned you're not sure what direction you want the Eternal Ruins to go yet. Um, is that going to be strict? Is it going, uh, is that going to be, sorry, one sec. Is that going to strictly be one direction? I don't really know what that means. I guess, uh, if you mean like, am I just going to decide, oh, this is going to be a game or whatever and not doing anything else? I hope not. I mean, uh, my dream would be for this to be almost like a multimedia thing eventually where you can um, read a comic or play a game or something. That would be awesome. But yeah, no, I'd, um, I mean, I've said this elsewhere, but I'm probably going to work on this like for most of my life I think because I just wanted something to originally just to tie together all of the art I make anyway um so yeah I think uh I'm I'm gonna keep making stuff and if there can be a lot of different stuff I can put out um then yeah sorry I'm falling behind a bit on these questions um uh, the beginning step for developing a project like this oh wow uh i mean i don't think i really sat down and was like oh i have this clear image of what i'm gonna do and this is how i'm gonna do it it was more um just like sketching stuff every now and then um i made a the sleeping statues illustration that i did actually i made before i even had thought about any of this it just sort of came out um and then I sort of thought more about 
you know, what is this place that I've just drawn? I know, yeah, I don't know. I guess my uh, sketches were going in a certain direction um, of drawing these kids in these ruins and stuff. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know, to be honest. Uh, just do, do what's fun and uh, yeah. What brushes do I use? They look really cool. Um, so, I mean, I, these are renamed, but I'm pretty sure these are just the default Procreate ones. Um, the main ones I use, I think this is just the G pen. I may have like tweaked them a little bit. Um, and then the dry ink, which uh, I've renamed it for some reason to dry ink fluid, but I'm pretty sure it's just the same as dry ink. So an earlier question, how do you deal with an art block? Um, personally, I just try and go do something else. Um, if you need to take a day to just be nice to yourself, like go outside, do some other stuff. Um, yeah, just generally just not do art for a little bit. Um, just like what no one really wants to hear, but yeah. Give yourself a little break. Uh, what made you decide to start this project in the first place? Yeah, like I said, I just wanted, um, you know, I'd always like enjoy looking at other artists, obviously. Um, and sometimes they would make something that would like really capture my imagination um, but that was just kind of like one drawing they made almost like this little glimpse into another world. And I've always kind of been fascinated with the idea of like, what if there was like recurring characters or it was all set in the same place. Um, I don't think it's so much of a thing because a lot of people have been like confused about the format of what I'm doing, I guess. But yeah, I just generally like the idea that um, everything someone makes is set in like the same place. And it's like a whole world that you could get stuck into if you wanted to. Uh, would you write a book about the Eternal Ruins? I mean, yeah, that would be cool. I feel like in a few years, it would be great to put together an art book or something. So it actually linked it for me. Thank you. Uh, I'm just going to put that in Discord because <laughs> I should really do that. Um, I am not good at social media and everything. I should check that that link actually goes here before I link it to... <laughs> yeah, cool. Thank you to person who linked for me. See, am um, I planning on turning Eternal Ruins into a comic or an animated series? An animated series, I have no idea how you <laughs> go about doing that. A uh, comic would be cool, but uh, I really need to get a bit better at drawing, I think, if I want to do that, because I, I don't know. It's, uh, it's a lot of work to make anything like that, and, uh, you know, you can't really share so much stuff when you start developing something like that. So I think the most important thing for me right now is just to try and like get eyes on what I'm doing. Um, and you know, maybe, yeah, people 
can reach out to me, can actually help me do something like that and not just sort of struggle with doing it alone. What's my favorite game? Um, that's a good question. I mean, I'm really enjoying Elden Ring right now. <laughs> I've been, I've sucked so bad. I've been playing it since like November and I just really want to finish it. Um, but that is an amazing game. Uh, do you do the story and world building yourself? Yep. I'm trying to, I'm uh, not like, I mean, I don't think I'm super good at writing, but I think mixed with like the artwork and a bunch of other stuff, it's sort of, it, it's okay. What made you start publishing this to the internet? Uh, I mean, yeah, so like a, a, I'm a freelancer um, and I've always, I don't know, I've been working on this for a few years and I'm just at a point in my life where I really want to see how far I can take this in terms of making it into like, you know, like a real job, not just like a side thing I draw while I do other stuff. So at the moment, I'm like, you know, living off savings and just trying to like work on this like crazy, get it out there and see if people like it. Which software is that? This is Procreate on the iPad. think of the fan art on the discord server i love it so much like uh oh god i got so emotional when people started posting stuff in there like uh yeah i don't know i've never had people like so interested in what i'm doing and just seeing like the idea get taken by other people and like I don't know, just something you've been working on for so long and then having it just sort of enter other people's um, own minds. I don't know. It's crazy. Yeah. Where am I from? I'm from the UK, but I don't sound very British anymore because I have lived in Sweden for like the last 10 plus years. So I have a bit of like a, people always think I'm Australian. Are you thinking of adding ecosystems and biology and different animals and creatures like flying whales or something otherworldly, mystical, kind of like a Leviathan? Yeah, I mean, I definitely want to add um, more stuff beyond just like um, spirits, demons and wanderers. I'm trying to like um, start with like the broad strokes i guess and then slowly work my way to more specific things but i mean i will say i'm not like um i don't know i i'm not super knowledgeable about like ecology and like animals and stuff like that and i feel like as far as world building goes i feel i don't know not like it's not interesting it is but like for instance i watched scavengers rain and, and i was like this is amazing. Uh, I just feel like my brain doesn't work that way in terms of being very kind of scientific and seeing how all those systems fit together and stuff like that. So uh, I will definitely try and make some cool creatures and stuff like that, but it'll be a bit of a learning curve for me, I think. Will there be what if scenarios such as USA finds teleportation into the eternal ruins universe and then sends in expeditionary forces <laughs> to liberate the ruins uh, while getting any artifacts for various use? Uh, I mean, I can pretty safely say no. Uh, I don't think so. I want to keep it like its own thing and not have it like the people from the real world going there. Did I know that all of the inspirations I listed are inspired by the same thing, Bronze Age Japan? Yes, I have been down 
the rabbit hole on my Pinterest board of it's mostly just like pots at this point, <laughs> like a, a Bronze Age pots that I just save pictures of. Um, so yeah, that's the the source. Uh, how do I get my inspiration? Um, uh, Pinterest, yeah, I got like a lot of Pinterest boards. Um, and then also I try and draw in like a kind of crappy sketchbook um, on like the subway and stuff like that. Um, and they're awful. Like I intentionally tried to make them not nice uh, because the point is just to sort of brainstorm um, and I think that helps a lot. And just like watching stuff around you as well. Uh, do you speak Swedish? Yes. Uh, I speak pretty bad Swedish. But I'd say like I'm almost fluent, but not quite. So I need to... I'm on the, the verge of trying to start speaking it a lot. question about spirits and demons are they amoral meaning they are not necessarily good or evil uh kind of like what avatar the last airbender had being so otherworldly that their motivation is unclear uh yeah for spirits definitely they're not supposed to, i mean the spirits and demons aren't supposed to be a kind of good and evil thing um one thing i don't like generally is when for instance, like with demons in fiction and stuff like that, that, um, you know, demons are like corruption and there's like a temptation element to them. I feel like that's kind of, I don't know, it, it feels a little like puritanical, I guess, in a way that um, isn't that interesting to me. So I try and think of it more... Um, yeah, that spirits are like really old and they have their own motivations. I kind of see them a bit like the way we see adults when we're very small children, that they're like adults can look really strange um, and they have these lives you don't know about, uh, their own ways of dealing with being so much older than you that you don't understand. Um, See, so yeah, I like that unknowableness. And then for demons, it's sort of, sort of supposed to be more like um, beings of emptiness, um, like, and suffering rather than just like cruel for no reason. Sorry, these uh, questions are flying by. Uh... Is it okay to ask how old you are? Yes, I am 30. So, um, yeah, I'm <laughs> getting old. Um, I can tell us about this little guy you're working on. I don't actually have any law for him yet. I, uh, I tend to work um, sort of from an interesting visual first and then more towards... Um, like fleshing them out with some story uh but i kind of i this is like sort of based on a drawing i had in my sketchbook i like this um idea that uh like the demons can have a lot of forms i don't just want it to be one sort of look that i'm stuck drawing forever uh so i'm experimenting with different ways they can move around for instance i imagine this one sort of shuffles around and like peeks out of all these strands um and yeah i don't know this is something i guess i've developed slightly while i've been drawing demons is this idea of like lots of these sort of ropey goopy um things uh just as like a kind of unsettling aspect and the idea is that they're um 
they kind of have like a physical vessel that they um, put together from surrounding stuff. So it's not like, oh, this is so clearly, you know, like a pot for a head or something like that. They're able to sort of like rearrange things, but that they um, feel a bit like more. I don't know if the spirits feel more natural than they feel more um, thrown together, I guess. But it is not like a solid rule or anything. Like I said, I want to be able to draw this stuff for a long time. So it's important for me to be able to have a lot of room for variety. Sorry, I'm just reading some comments. <laughs> I'm quite slow. Uh, there's a bunch I don't really know the answer to. It's like, like a spirits like lion turtles from Avatar. It's ages since I saw that, so I don't remember. How do I come up with lore for my characters? Um, <laughs> I struggle a lot too. Um, uh, honestly, it can. I feel like the ones that turn out good are usually something I have thought about for a while and has kind of slowly developed and like literally months or years. And then I'll wake up in the middle of the night <laughs> and I'll know exactly what I want to do with them and I'll furiously write it down and then I'll read it the next morning and try and figure out what that was all about. So yeah, I wouldn't say I have a good system just yet. A lot of the architecture on the ruins walls had similar features to a few demons you showcased. Is that an intentional connection? Uh, I would say I want everything to feel like it's part of the same thing, but I wouldn't say I've intentionally laced any imagery throughout stuff yet anyway I would like to start doing that um, but generally I mean I think there's certain shapes that feel ancient that I would like to incorporate into things Question. Demons seem to feed on suffering but can't directly hurt wanderers do they actually want to kill wanderers? since doing so would rob them of a fairly uncommon source of nutrition. Yeah, they, they don't want to uh, kill them. Uh, like I said, um, I have a video on demons coming out in like a week, so I'll just save... Yeah, I, I'll save it for that, I think, just because I don't want it to be like, oh, you have like important information spread across like a live stream or a discord channel or something like that but yeah they don't want to kill them but you know there's things worse than dying as well i'm in the middle of world building myself do you have any advice for me uh, and what inspired you to make videos of your world um i don't know just have fun with it and uh don't be afraid to do something different as well like um I can't say I really understand why why this is like uh, more successful than other things I've made in the past. So I'm not like super sure about advice. But yeah, I would say just as long as you're having fun, what you're doing, then that's the most important thing because I, I think it shows, I guess. Uh, and what inspired me to make videos for my world uh, honestly yeah I was seeing the monster garden videos I felt like I'd wanted to I was interested in YouTube for like uh, the last year or so um, I watch a lot of YouTube um, but I didn't want to make art tutorials or like 
you know, and they narrate and they're like, next I do this and this as if you're going to like follow along with it. Um, I'm just not really interested in that kind of more educational, like follow the process along with me kind of thing. So I wanted it to be something like more law driven. Um, so when I saw uh, the Monster Garden videos, I was like, oh, there's actually like a way to do it. Um, so yeah, and then I just, I've just been trying out um, posting in different places in different ways. Um, yeah. Do I ever dream about the Eternal Ruins? I don't, but I get a lot of messages from people who do, uh, which I think is really fascinating, the, uh, the idea of this infinite, um, ancient ruin is something people are like, is part of the, the cultural subconscious or something that, yeah, people are like, uh, I don't know. Yeah, there's something going on there. Do I ever think about life outside the ruins? Uh, I think it's kind of funny. <laughs> I like, uh, like the one thing with this is like, it's just the ruins forever. Um, and the first thing people always ask is like, but what about outside of it? Um, so it's like, it maybe there is things outside of this place, but as far as like what I'll be exploring, it's just, um, it's just ruins. Uh, but I mean, I think, my my plan is for it to feel like a whole world and not just uh, like, oh, it's just inside here. That's not that much, you know. Is there any, is there a story that I'm working on with characters for the Eternal Ruins or is it just more a, a location with lore? Yeah, I want it to be like a setting for stories rather than just... Um, like just a place with nothing in it like uh, I think ultimately I want it to be like a rich backdrop for the kind of stories you could tell in a place like that and the kind of more I don't know the relationships you would make with other people in that kind of scenario and also the different philosophies you would have about uh, your own existence in a place that seems to go on forever, like struggling with things like, um, you know, like isolation, things feeling meaningless. I think there's stories to be told there uh, that are interesting. And I, I have a bunch of like loose ideas for characters that have been growing, like I said before, like for a few years of just sketching them or writing notes about what they might be like. So at some point, I definitely want to do something with that. How do adventurers eat, sleep, use the bathroom and bathe in the ruins are uh, their settlements? So uh, eating there's food to forage from the ruins like roots mushrooms uh fish you know uh there's moss you can eat so there's all kinds of stuff that can be found to eat uh sleeping i mean you just find somewhere to sleep that seems safe uh, bathing and water there's fountains and maybe like i don't know rivers or ancient baths or something that you can find uh, as far as going to the bathroom i gotta say it's not something i have thought about and not something like a detail i'm super interested in mostly just because i guess i don't come at things from this like resource driven sort of simulationist angle for instance like when i played Ico or Shadow of the Colossus or Hollow Knight, like big inspirations for me. I was never like, oh, but where are they going to the toilet? It just sort of feels like an otherworldly place where you don't really think about that stuff.
uh, other settlements. No, so that's like another thing that seems to give people a hard time. It's just like, it's just ruins. The shrines, I would say, are like the closest thing to a settlement, but there's maybe like, there's so few wanderers that you maybe see like five people together most in your life. Um, so yeah, it's different than a lot of other uh, settings in that way, I guess. But, you know, we have like a million fantasy worlds set in like medieval Europe, essentially with settlements and stuff like that. So this is one of the things that makes this one a little different. Sorry, if I'm skipping questions, I like specifically like very law related stuff, I don't want to get too deep into, but if mo stuff that's more about like the project um, as a creator and stuff like that might be better to answer here. Uh, am I still working or am I full time on this world building? I'm full time on this world building right now. Um, I was freelancing. Um, almost full time last year. So I have a little bit of savings from that. Uh, and I'm just trying to, yeah, focus on this for a while and see if it goes anywhere, you know, but eventually I will need to probably find a way to make some money. Uh, if this was a game, would demons be like boss fights, common enemies, or both? I, I wouldn't say boss fights. I sort of picture um, like a lot of the threats in this world. If you would fight them, it would be more like you're fighting them off uh, so you can get away. I, th I like the idea that you're very uh, small or insignificant in this place. So I guess in that way, it almost feel more like a... A horror game or something um but yeah i mean i don't see this as like being super combat driven i guess which would make it kind of hard to sell as a video game can two wanderers from the same statue field uh awake at the same time and if so are they considered siblings yeah, I like, I've thought about that as an idea of like, um, by chance, just to awoke near each other, like, that would be very interesting as a story. And yeah, I like the idea of them being siblings, technically, then. Where did I get my art style? So I uh, didn't draw like this at all for most of my time as an artist. Uh, I drew and paint or I used to draw and paint quite realistically for a long time um and then eventually I looked at all of my inspirations and felt like uh why <laughs> why do I draw realistically when absolutely everything I like is um heavily stylized and then I started trying to change my style more to reflect the things I like then I would say I've been doing that for like the last three years like some of the earlier eternal ruins stuff has like the occasional outlier style wise of trying to figure out how I wanted to draw and paint uh, from that point sorry I've fallen way behind on these questions uh seen scavenger's rain yes i love scavenger's rain that was like the coolest thing i've seen in a long time have you already explored spiritual connections to the elements of the ruins or cults religions surrounding it uh it's something i'm thinking about um yeah i don't know <laughs> it's not something i've uh, delved into super much just yet Uh, do wanderers seek companionship or are they normally content to, content to be solitary? I'd say it depends on the 
the Wanderer and how they deal with uh, being alone. Is sharing your world project a good way to protect it, like copyright? Uh, I think, um, I don't know. Unfortunately, I think you have to really fight to get your work out there as an artist. And unfortunately, it's probably like uh, protecting it is for when I actually gotten quite a bit bigger. So for now, I'm just sort of, yeah, just trying to get it out there as much as possible. Because uh, if people don't see a thing, then there's no point really trying to protect it. Where did the demons come from? Yeah, I won't answer that here because that's pretty big law stuff. Uh, have I seen Made in Abyss? Yeah, I saw that like a, like a while into making this. There were, there were parts I liked about it, but it got very dark and disturbing in a way that I felt uh, I wouldn't want to go that direction. Would a wanderer ever keep a lesser spirit as a pet or as a travel companion? Uh, I really like the idea of a minor spirit and a wanderer kind of traveling together for a short time if their interests aligned. Um, yeah, I'm, I've thought about it. I don't know as a pet since they're like intelligent, but yeah, that'll there'll be more stuff about that kind of thing in the future. I've completely lost track of these questions now, so I'm just trying to pick random ones. I'm very sorry if I've missed any. Uh, am I going to make this into a game or an animated pilot, or am I just planning on building lore for now? I'm just planning on building lore for now. Uh, as I said, I could, I guess, try and figure out how to do those things myself, but I don't have really the skills. Like I don't know anything about animation. Um, so yeah, I just want to, and like same with making a game, I wouldn't know where to start. So I just want to keep making stuff and um, see where it goes really. Uh, do the ruins wanderers get old? So far we've only seen child teen like wanderers. Do they age or uh almost end up dying before they really get older? So they, they don't age. There's no adults in this place. Uh there are law reasons, but um as a you know, creator one of the things I like is um I like fiction where children are competent and uh, have to deal with um, I don't know more serious aspects of life or the world that they basically that there's no adults around to come fix things for you that you have to figure things out for yourself um, so yeah the, the kids stay kids uh not asking for specifics but do you have an explanation in mind for the history of the world the civilization that once was why children have stolen etc yeah so i have like um i've written a lot of stuff with like pre-ruins history um and i hope i never start sharing it because i would like it to be um something you just kind of feel through the world I'm making or the stories that are told that maybe there are remnants from certain stories there or you know whether it's places or objects uh things like that that um can sort of slowly be uh unveiled but not like uh you know have like a flashback to before the ruins or something like that it's very much about like what's happening here and now i would say how do i feel about fans creating fan content of the world um 
Oh, I, yeah, no, I love it. It's amazing. Uh, I want people to do that because I really love seeing it. And uh, I love the idea of the Eternal Ruins being something like we're all exploring. So, yeah, on if you post on the Discord, then I check, like, all of them. Can we print your drawings ourselves? Uh, I'd prefer if you didn't uh, because, you know, I don't really make much money so i'm gonna try and put up some leftover prints i have um and then i need to figure out yeah how i want to sell prints and stuff like that but you know i can't stop you so whatever Why do I explain the world through the character's perspective instead of just saying how the world works? I do that because there is no um, societies, so there's no common established history or knowledge. Like often when things are told to us like that, it's like we all know what happened and history and society accepts these as these the events of our world that we all agree on um and that doesn't exist in this setting so i want it to be very much uh told from a wanderer who's trying to make sense of the world around them and uh i think it's more immersive as well and wanderers farm food I'd say there's like not super many places to farm with it being like stone ruins and stuff. Um, but yeah, I like the idea of someone trying to just give it a go anyway. Like I, I have an idea for a character who's kind of against all odds. Like I'm just going to build a house uh, and try and live in one place uh despite the struggles that that would bring uh, did i have any inspirations to make this massive world like the souls were well? yeah i mean like all i think i listed my inspirations in the first video i did but like the team ico games the atmosphere of those i feel like i've just never experienced elsewhere really and i don't understand why there isn't more stuff like that it doesn't make sense to me like i for years just been googling like more games like ico or shadow of the colossus and it's just so hard to find there's like a few every now and then or you know why aren't there like tv shows or all kinds of stuff uh it doesn't i don't know so as a fan i'm like annoyed that there isn't more ruin type uh content so yeah i figured i would just try and do some myself why don't i assemble a game developer team because i've uh worked in game development and it's really really hard and actually managing a serious project over like if you're lucky like three years of development is a whole job uh i don't know i just have a lot of respect for the um seriousness of that endeavor so if i'm gonna spend you know three to five years making a video game then i want it to be something that will turn out really great um and i i don't have any money to pay anyone i don't want anyone to work for three to five years on a project for free um just because they're passionate about it like i don't think that's right you said the eternal ruins are impossible to map uh but are there some permanent pathways at all and how would the ruin the rest rebuild itself so I, my idea mostly is that um, like it is a physical, tangible 
place. It's not like rewriting itself all the time. Um, mostly just that it's so laid out in such a way that makes it very difficult to navigate. Like it's not really built to be walked around. You can easily come to dead ends or areas that are hard to cross. Um, and just the nature of it all looking very similar would make it very hard. For instance, if you lost your companion just to find each other again, um, that it's just very complicated. Um, and as far as it being rebuilt, I kind of had the idea for a while, but I read um, Blame recently and they had the sort of same idea that there are these like servitor constructs that are just given the command of build um, forever. So there's just parts that like you might have mapped it and you'll come back and be like, this looks completely different. That's a bit of a low question, but I feel like uh, I've noticed it kind of might have given the wrong idea in the way I described it um, as well, that it's not just like an actual maze labyrinth with that's flat with walls, but yeah, more like um, just seems to go on endlessly in every direction. Like there's staircases, bridges, uh, tunnels, pathways that it just uh, more of a maze in the sense that it's very hard to get around. Do the Wanderers have any type of uh, other ways of moving than just by foot? Just by foot uh, for now. I like the idea of so I'm trying to figure something else out, but I haven't really thought about it yet. Is there an emotional basis for this project? Sometimes it, I feel like I'm wandering around an ancient world with no direction or purpose. I mean, I came up with the idea during like lockdown in COVID, so maybe the, some of the isolation there kicked in. I don't know. How many wanderers are in the world? I don't even know. Uh, it's a huge, huge world, but yeah, I have said that since there are very few, it's like, um, the most people you would really see together at once is like five or six people, um, beyond that, for whatever reason, it's just, you just don't see that many people. Is fishing possible? Yeah, I want that to be fishing. Fishing is cozy. Would I ever consider giving tutorials in Procreate and Concept Art? Um, I'm not super interested in like doing um, educational stuff, I would say, but if people have questions about what I'm doing, I'm happy to answer that. I just want to focus more on, I guess, the... Uh, art side like the creative side that if you're a non-artist that there is like um that you enjoy watching these as well um that it's not just for artists you know Comments. I keep getting so lost. Is the lockdown a big problem for me? Uh, I mean, it, yeah, it kind of sucked. Um, uh, I don't know. I was just living alone at the time and working a lot, and it wasn't super great. Uh, but I would say I didn't have it as bad as most people, so you know, I'm not gonna like make it sound like I had the worst time. But yeah, it wasn't super nice. I'm using Procreate on the iPad. 
I try and do all of my drawing stuff on here because I just like uh, drawing with a pen on a screen. I find it, I like, don't mind painting on other types of tablets, but uh, just as far as drawing, drawing, then I need to feel like a, yeah, a pen on a surface and see what's happening. What are my thoughts on Krita? Uh, I I have it on my computer. I've been using Photoshop for like a long time, but I don't um, I don't support Adobe and their model. So I think anyone who's um, getting into digital art should use Krita for sure. you don't want us to print out your work but can we share our fan art with you yes please do uh there's a discord uh, i think on one of like my community posts there's a link maybe there's a link below this stream as well uh but there's like a fan art channel there and if you want to share anything you make if it's uh, drawings or like fan fiction music whatever like i love to see it upside down now uh, I like uh, I rotate the the drawing a lot to try and get like uh, a good I don't know a good stroke I guess uh, that I can move my arm in a way that doesn't leave like a super wiggly line so yeah I rotate a lot do you have a do you plan on having wanderers that worship and give offerings to the demons? Uh, so yeah, that's going to be a, a thing in um, the the next video. But yeah, there are um, basically the equivalent of wardens, but for demons who are called demon keepers. Uh, and they have their own whole thing that I'm going to explain. So yeah, uh, I'll save it for that. But yes, there are wanderers who... Uh, help out demons. Uh, which version of the iPad am I using? Oh, that's a really good question. I don't know. Um, like, is the bigger one, like 12 inches something, and I think they got it. It might be like 2021 version. Sorry, I'm not sure. Am I using OBS? Yes, I am. And I'm a total noob to streaming, so if I'm doing something like super wrong or if it looks terrible on screen, please let me know. Uh, let's see. mentioned the things that inspired the eternal ruins but do you have anyone who inspired your art style yeah absolutely i'd say the biggest one um I'll just a link because i don't really know um how do you say that i think they're called marco uh i can just link their instagram But like, especially when I was starting to be like, okay, I don't actually like how my art looks at all. I feel like I was looking at this artist a lot. Um, and again, like, um, oh, wow, all of this art is like in these ruins, which might feel very familiar, but just like, wouldn't it be cool if this was like, because for me looking at their art, I was like, this all feels like the same place and uh, something I'd love to explore. So yeah. Um, yeah, really love their artwork. I have a bunch of their prints above my desk. Uh, so yeah, huge, huge influence. And I, I mean, that's just like one of many artists, you know, I, yeah. What 
made me want to start working on the eternal ruins now i mean i've been working on it for the last like three years or something like it's been something i've been doing in the background for a while um yeah pretty much just that it felt like okay people actually like this and i really like it and it's something i want to explore to see could this be something if i work on it a bunch Uh, the pen texture, it's just uh, the dry ink brush. Uh, I just, I've given it a different name, but it is just the dry ink brush um, that's stock with Procreate. I don't know which menu it's in. But... The ruins completely underground or are there open uh, areas that open to the sky if there is one? So there's no areas that open to the sky, like there's always something above. Uh, but there are areas that, um, you know, are more tied to closed in uh, passageways and then areas you might come to that are extremely vast. Um, but yeah, I had a few drawings in the beginning with like sky in them just to see how it felt. And I don't know, I feel like then it's like a whole vast outdoor wilderness world, which isn't something... It kind of took away from the whole exploring a ruins thing. So yeah, it's not all underground necessarily, but you know, you might see like I like want it to be so that there's sun that comes in certain areas. Maybe you like always can kind of see some light coming from above if you come into really open areas that seem to go on up for ages. Um, I also like the idea of there being kind of rain that'll come down from upper areas too. So I think in that sense, it's sort of maybe not super logical that like you can never quite reach it, but I obviously, I don't want it to be super dark and horrible all the time. Um, but yeah, I would say the, there might be like large gardens and stuff like that, but yeah, not, um, not like outdoor wilderness. What inspired me to do YouTube? Yeah, I kind of mentioned that before, but like seeing the Monster Garden channel sort of uh, made it clear that there was uh, another way to do art videos uh, that lined up with what I'd been thinking about for a while. So, and I'd just been interested in YouTube generally uh, since I watch a lot of YouTube videos. Oh, the ruins lit up yeah like i said it's sort of like usually natural light um obviously i imagine there's areas that are very dark always um and areas that are lighter and you're not really quite sure where the light's coming like it's always kind of coming like if there's daylight that it's coming from above or away but you can never really quite catch it um i think i also have in a couple of pictures like um sort of like glowing lantern things that light some areas too but generally i love the idea of wanderers walking around with like lanterns and torches because uh i think one of the big things of the eternal ruins for me is this kind of coziness in a really like big dark world that you have to like make your own light in it I read the book Piranesi. Yes, I read that like a year ago. Um, and that really felt like, oh man, like someone else uh, is tapping into the same the same inspiration stream. I read that um, really quickly. Uh, and I really loved it. Like, uh, it gave me a lot of ideas for what it would be like to live in a place like that. some of the animals in the ruins tried to start a society again it's like uh i don't know i think it's just the one thing that everyone really wants the, to be a society uh 
and it's the one thing that there really isn't in this setting that it is just uh basically a mega dungeon like uh i don't know i just i guess i feel like it would kill the um feeling of exploring an untouched place if it's uh, a town or something within walking distance from you uh it kind of adds a level of um normality to the place that i i don't really feel like belongs in this setting how do i have 34,000 subs in only five videos uh because i posted the first uh I think I had like 400 subscribers just because I've had a YouTube channel for a long time and I would just occasionally put up like a process video with some music and stuff. Um, and then I put up the first video for this and I, I didn't promote it anywhere. I, was, I thought I was just going to like kind of sneak it in and slowly like build up like a YouTube channel or something. And then it just got like absolutely crazy attention. So I think all of the subscribers I have is just from that first video, to be honest, which is absolutely insane. Like, I'm, yeah, thank you to everyone who has gotten behind what I'm doing uh, in the last weeks, because it's, yeah, uh, really weird after working on this for so long, uh, with no one really, like, paying much attention to it. Will the stream be available to watch, rewatch after it's done? I think so. I'll try and make it so that it's uh, on my YouTube page. Uh, would you say that you accidentally found a new niche or that you knew you had something? I think I've kind of known this is something like interesting, at least, like just from. Um, I like for the last few years, uh, seeing like other artists, I know reaction to what I'm doing and like close friends. Like I remember a friend, like looking in my sketchbook and being like, like, oh, wow, what is this? And uh, just this, like noticing, uh, some kind of difference there in terms of, uh, compared to stuff I've done before. So yeah, I mean, I've kind of known that it's something cool because I really like it as well. So, um, yeah, I don't know, but the, you know, I've just been struggling against the, the algorithms, uh, as well, just to try and get people to see what I'm doing. Uh, blessed by the algorithm N now I am like for once, but you know, I like, I've uh, been, I've been grinding away for the last couple of years and I would get like a glimpse of like a bunch of people see something I did and then it would just kind of go back to the usual. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I, but I, I mean, this is awesome with YouTube. I'm super happy with how it's uh, going so far and I'm just going to keep, uh, keep making stuff. you're winning not struggling well uh, i don't know i think uh i think it's easy for things to look a certain way from the outside but like like i said before i mean i'm not like earning any money or well, i get like patreon so like a little bit but in terms of like you know, I'm really making like a living and stuff uh i think i have a long way to go In the Kassiri series of prints from the 1600s, the Piranesi prison ones, if that's what that is, then yeah, that's like, uh, that's so good. There's a beard. I mean, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> sort of supposed to be more like weird feelers that it shuffles around and can maybe like 
hide its head in. gonna stay on for another like seven minutes or so so I'll just uh, answer some more questions before I hop off uh, what brushes do you use just the procreate uh, standard ones so the lines for this is just the dry ink brush are you anonymous or can you share your real name yeah I, my name is Sam Carr the a Double R. I am not anonymous. It's this demon, like a teenager, trying to be edgy and letting its hair hang over its face. Yes, this is the emo emo demon. Have I heard of Maiden Abyss? Yes, so I watched it like uh, a couple of years ago. It's cool. Uh, I mean, especially in the beginning, I really liked it. It just felt like it got a little too dark for me. What about fully underwater areas? Maybe someone finds a charm that gives water breathing or something with like glowing plants and stuff. Yeah, I mean, uh, I definitely want it to be like flooded regions. Um, yeah, absolutely. Fauna can be found in the ruins. I, I really need to explore that properly, to be honest. I haven't gotten there yet. There a magic sword hidden anywhere i think uh, so there's going to be like magic items called relics um i would like weapons specifically to be kind of rare but i mean you know probably do you have a name for this demon i haven't named him yet uh i'll think of something later Pro like i said i usually start with the drawing and then uh come up with some lore stuff later Pretty much anyone that has invested as much time into developing a world as you believe what they have is different. How do you know? How does one know if their creation really is? Uh, I've been making stuff for like 15 years and you just, I mean, uh, the reaction to what I'm doing now has been so easy. I haven't had to like try to convince people that what I'm making is interesting. Um, so I would say just like noticing the difference in people's reaction to what you're doing. Like uh, if people are like, oh yeah, that's cool. Uh, or if they're like, whoa, like this is so interesting. Like where can I learn more about this? Uh, I'd say just try and like put stuff out and see. Uh, and that can even just be like close friends and stuff like that. Um, but just trying to see when people are more interested uh, in what you make and for how it feels for you as well more importantly like uh, that if, if it feels more right for you uh, how did you start your world building process I have an idea for a world but I have a hard time taking the idea and giving it structure do you have any tips on starting and finding time to world build um, I don't know I feel like a lot of people will be like oh you need to make like a region and then nations and all this stuff and obviously I haven't done that um I would say like just tentatively putting some things down is like okay this is definite this is something I definitely want in this even if it's just like a genre trope or something and then just trying to add more stuff in those um which I know is really vague advice, but just that it can be hard to actually nail down some ideas is definite. Uh, but I think if you can start doing that, you can always change it. Um, but that at least is how I've done it just slowly over time of like, oh, okay, I really want the to be like a giant frog. Um, what can that be? And then being like, okay, so there's these spirits uh, that are all, like all these weird things I've been drawing are actually all part of the same thing, stuff like that. So just trying to slowly um, make some things definite and tie things together would be my advice. 
Uh, is there a particular favorite demon of yours? Um, I liked the design I did for Masas. That's um, on the Patreon. I might have shared the design on a video. I'm not sure, but it's like a floating black uh, form with this pointy head with an eye that I think turned out cool. Tips for someone trying to start an animation channel. I have no idea about that, unfortunately. I'm sorry. Have you made things on YouTube outside of this channel uh, before the algorithm blessed you? I, I mean, I had like loads of like, um, I would just make like process videos, like time lapse process with some music, and I would get like a couple of hundred views uh, that I've just taken down now because they weren't really related to what I'm doing. So, yeah, I mean, I've tried to do. YouTube stuff before. Uh, how many ones? I mean, it's pretty much my full time job at the moment, like six to eight hours and <laughs> constantly thinking about it all the time. Uh, what helps you brainstorm ideas for this? Uh, yeah, just like writing down a list of words usually and then trying to write other words. Um, and like I said before, trying to just like pay attention when you're um, out doing non-art stuff that see if there's things that are interesting that you notice. Um, I don't know, for example, like uh, I was drawing on a plane once and I was on the aisle seat and I felt like really squished by the person next to me and people walking down the aisle and I was just suddenly like, how do you... I've never drawn someone feeling squeezed in to a tight space. How do I draw that? Uh, just trying to like um, let things happening around you uh, have some effect on what you're doing in your art, I think introduces uh, something different into it. Okay, I, I think I, I gotta go, so I'm sorry to the questions I couldn't get to. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for joining everyone. Uh, this was fun. I'd like to do it again sometime. So uh, yeah.